call Mallory. We see her as having a fit between um, supplementing our research programs, our, our uh, on-farm research trials, and then being able to communicate to, uh, to influencers and farmers. So uh, we're really excited to have her aboard. Welcome. Um, and thanks, thanks to Pam and Lorianne and Kate for organizing such a dynamic morning of speakers. I'm really excited to hear it. Um, I just have a few, few uh, items I wanted to talk about and draw your attention to. Some things that have happened in the last 12 months since we have spoken and what's coming up. Uh, the first is a Canadian Wheat Research Coalition, or CWRC, if you've noticed that. Uh, Manitoba, along with Alberta Wheat and Sask Wheat, fund research on a proportional acreage basis. Um, it's taken over three years to make this happen, and the staff has really worked hard in the last year especially on cluster funding. And through that national cluster funding, CWRC and our collaborating funders were awarded research projects totaling $25 million over five years, and Manitoba's share of that is $932,000. In addition to that, keeping that on, the, on track and monitoring it, um, the last year we've spent a lot of effort on um, core wheat breeding agreements, um, some are ending, and some will end in the next year and a half. And we're pretty excited that we actually got our first core funding agreement signed uh, with a crop development center out of Saskatoon. And that totaled $9.6 million over five years. And that also represents a significant increase from the last funding program. So we're pretty excited to see the work they're going to do on uh, wheat breeding moving forward. The other uh, great thing that has happened is that the Canadian Barley Research Coalition has also been formed, and it's a similar structure as the CWRC. I, I think the real benefit to these research coalitions is that it really formalizes the commitment to collaborating, funding research for the long term, which provides a very stable environment for our our researchers and producers knowing it. For, on the research side, over the last six years, from 2014 to 2019, Manitoba Wheat and Barley Growers, on your behalf, have invested $4.92 million in 43 different research projects, and with the total cost of those research projects is $86.72 million. And that's kind of one of our core, core um, efforts is to leverage producer dollars wherever possible. It doesn't mean we won't do research solely funding it ourselves, it just means that we try to, to get the most value out of our producer dollars. And uh, the other exciting thing that's happened in the last month or so is uh, that the research, the research results that uh, you can find in the focal point, I don't know if we have a copy of that here today, Kate, do we? Oh, Gloria. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, we have our first ever re research publication in the form of a magazine, so we're really excited about that. And the other thing we've spent a lot of time on is a Manitoba Crop Alliance proposed amalgamation. After over three years of hard work, uh, extensive farmer and producer consultation, and I think we've been, we're on our third Ag Minister now through this process. Uh, we are approaching the um, vote for the amalgamation in February at Crop Connect at all our AGMs. Uh, you should have got a meeting notice, at, at least one, that looks like this, and you should have got one from each of the five organizations. Um, Having said that, there's still time. We have one more webinar to uh, provide information if you don't have enough yet. And all of the relevant documents are on our websites. Plus, there is a, a mbcrops.ca is a specific website just for, for the, the Crop Alliance. 
Um, I wanted to thank all the producers who took the time and effort to give us what seemed like sometimes criticism, but it was very useful information because we reworked the governance and structure of the board, and I think we have a, have a significantly better organization. Um, there will be a, a vote, as I said, at our AGMs on February 12th and 13th. Uh, we'll require a two-thirds majority to pass the amalgamation resolution, and we will require uh, unanimously amongst all five of the grower organizations have to pass the resolution for Manitoba Crops Alliance to be formed. Uh, please plan to attend. If you can spread the word, we'd appreciate it, and if you can bring four or five of your neighbors and buddies to vote, that would also be great. Uh, there's no cost. You don't have to be registered to, at Crop Connect to attend any of the AGMs. Uh, okay. So the other thing I wanted to talk a little bit about is uh, falling number in 2019. Uh, what I think I've learned, and sometimes it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, but uh, I used to think falling number or a low fall number was an indication of pre-harvest sprouting except in 2019. Um, 300 seconds is, is kind of the lower limit of wheat flower functionality. And uh, there's also a 30 to 50 second variance in the test on any one given sample. Um, blending low and high falling number wheats to, to uh, deliver into the market shouldn't be done unless you know the blending ratio. Um, we had a little talk with a, a wheat miller and he, he indicated that it's not a linear equation. There's a specific um, formula you need to use and, and it, was, it was way of, over my head. Uh, we did hear through new crop missions that our, our purchasers of our wheat are concerned about falling number this year. I think part of that was uh, we had very little carryover of last year's wheat, so they immediately got this crop sweep. Um, I, think, I think we as farmers in the interim need to be very vigilant about proper bin and variety sampling. We're starting to see there's some differences from variety to variety in the same wheat class. And, and we just need to have all those tested so we know exactly what we have so we can get as much value out of our wheat as we can. Um, the correlation between visible sprouts, as our grading system is based, doesn't seem to uh, equate into falling number like it normally does. Um, I kind of think that's like a couple of years ago we had the same issue with fusarium damage kernels didn't equate into dawn level accumulation. So I, <coughs> although we always feel like it's the grain trade is trying to take advantage of us, I, I don't think they really are. Um, what it does, I guess, say to me as, as uh, a board member that we maybe need to drive a little more research on this. I think we maybe need to challenge the Canadian Grade Commission and SIGI and whoever else on the research side can, can get some more modern recommendations because our varieties are different and we farm quite a bit differently. Uh, you know, we're starting to hear that suspecting maybe drying is also causing it or strictly environment. And I think the more information then that we can give to producers so we all understand to help mitigate any of these losses moving forward. Um, the last thing I wanted to touch on, and I think we have time for a few questions, uh, was value creation model. Uh, last year, uh, it, was, it was a hot topic, and uh, then through the spring, there was supposed to be an economic assessment on the two models that was supposed to come out, and then a federal election came along in the cooling off period, so we've never received that, and we haven't yet. Uh, personally, you know, this is just Fred speaking, I'm wondering if the minority government maybe has a few other issues to deal with uh, that are of greater importance so we may not see it for a while. Um, 
Having said that, though, Manitoba wheat and barley growers, we haven't significantly changed our stance on it. Um, but we are starting to hear rumblings that um, some seed developers and seed distribution companies aren't going to wait for value creation, and they're going to come out with some, some form of a contract uh, and in the next, within the next two years, but maybe even as early as this spring. Uh, that's all I had, Boris. If there's, I could take a couple quick questions, maybe. Yeah. Hey, Rick, Rick Rutherford here. Rick Rutherford, you dirty dog. How are you doing? <laughs> Fantastic. I'm just going to make a comment on falling numbers and what we see in our area. What is driven by is the main variety we're using today actually has a poor sprouting resistance. And that general pool has pulled everything down because of that. If you use a variety or different mix of varieties, I think the falling number probably wouldn't be as bad as where it is. But because we're driven, and I don't want to single stuff up, but I think in our area, that's what the guys have seen, is because we've got into almost a modern variety culture that when we get a little bit of moisture, it affects us much more. Well, yeah, you know, that's an excellent point. And uh, I'll maybe try to, to uh, paraphrase that a little bit. Um, and part of the collection system, right, like one train load can come out of an area, and when we're dealing with one predominant variety that may have an issue, whether it's gluten strength or sprouts. So I, I think as producers, we maybe need to be uh, aware of that, and, and although um, we always like growing our favorite wheat, maybe we need to have two or three in the roshan just so that we can, can address that. Thanks for the comment, Rick. Okay. Thank you very much.